I understand it is the government's intention to introduce an impressed supply bill. Reply second for 2011-12 bill introduction. The bill is set down for first reading forthwith. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm just working out where we're up to on the motion. Just, <laughs> just to move that it be read a first time. <laughs> I so move, Mr Speaker. Uh, the question is the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Supply second for 2011-12 bill first reading. The bill is set down for second reading forthwith. I call on government order of the day number one. Appropriation 2011-12 Estimates Bill, third reading. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I move that the appropriation... Oh. Point of order, the Honourable uh, Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, I thought we were also going to do the second reading of the Empress Supply Bill with this, and that hasn't yet been called. The, the Minister is about to move both those. The Minister is about to do that, oh. yeah. The Honourable Bill English. He's called Government Order of the Day. The, 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 the clerk has called Government Order of the Day number one, and that covers both these bills. The uh, well, point of order, Mr Speaker, at, at the moment it says it may be taken with the Impress Supply Bill. Um, it doesn't have to be, and I would have thought for a, for a bill to have a reading it must be called. The bill, the bill was set down, uh, I just a moment ago set the bill down for second reading forthwith. And that's why uh, the Minister is now about to move that both bills uh, be read a second time. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Noel. <coughs> Mr Speaker, I move that the appropriation 2011-12 estimates bill be now read a third time and the impressed supply second for 2011-12 bill be now read a second time. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, as we get to the end of the uh, budget process, it's probably the right time to uh, recap just what the uh, main features of the budget were. Uh, although so much has happened in an economic sense, both positive and negative, uh, since late May, uh, that one could be forgiven for thinking, uh, because circumstances have moved on, maybe the debate should move on. But in fact, a feature of this budget is that it continues the considered and consistent decisions uh, that the government has been making uh, since it came to office in 2008 uh, with a couple of particular objectives in mind. One has been to protect the vulnerable through uh, tough times, uh, and that has included over uh, recent budgets the government continuing to spend to maintain and grow public services uh, to maintain and grow income support uh, to those who rely on it. And a second objective, uh, which has been to lay the platform for undoing the imbalances uh, that built up through the first decade of the century and laying the platform for higher incomes and more jobs for New Zealanders through a better performing economy over the next 10 years. And those decisions have taken account of the way in which the world uh, has changed uh, even since the middle of 2008. And if I can just remark on that uh, in passing, Mr Speaker, uh, the, we will continue to see, in my view, episodes of volatility, concern and occasionally crisis in international markets. And that's driven by uh, the fact that this is a pretty fundamentally simple issue uh, underlying the pressures that we are seeing uh, the, through the, certainly through the last decade and, and um, <clears throat> years previous to that uh, many developed countries have, have built up large amounts of debt. The crisis of 2008 shifted a, a lot of that debt uh, from the private sector to government balance sheets but it continues to grow and as long as that debt continues to grow it's going to cause continue to cause disruption because the only way to deal with debt is write it off or pay it off and neither of those things are happening at the moment. Uh, even then, as governments get on top of this fast rising debt, uh, they're then going to have to try and get it down uh, from 
dangerously high levels, uh, and that is just as politically difficult, uh, maybe even more so, than trying to stop it rising, because at least when debt is rising, the public can understand with some alarm, uh, the public can understand, see that with some alarm and can understand the need for action. And Mr. so, Mr Speaker, the Government has always taken a longer-term view of these risks. Uh, the fact that the crisis of 2008 appeared uh, uh, receded in its immediacy into 2009 and certainly by 2010 uh, did not mean that the fundamental uh, imbalances had been dealt with, and that's what we have taken account of in Budget 2011. Uh, back in Budget 2009, the main uh, feature of it uh, was to uh, clean up the loose ends from the previous government, but in particular to initiate a uh, longer term and significant investment in infrastructure. Uh, the previous government had begun that process, uh, but the government in that budget set out productive infrastructure as one of the fundamental building blocks of uh, a productive economy. And I'm pleased to say that two years on, uh, that program is well underway, uh, adequately funded, uh, well understood, and we're getting very good value for money from an infrastructure industry that understands uh, that, that because it can see the government program can invest appropriately and has six, seven, eight years of work ahead of it. In Budget 2010, the main, switch, the main uh, focus was the tax switch. Uh, we took the opportunity, uh, probably a unique opportunity, presented in 2010 to shift the balance of the longer-term incentives in this economy uh, in a way which uh, many advisers have, uh, have advised over the years, but the opportunity had never quite arisen. Uh, it was focused on a pretty simple <coughs> idea that um, there were some uh, aspects of imbalance in the economy which could be influenced by changes in tax rates. So we increased tax on consumption and the effective tax rate on property investment and cut tax rates on income, uh, on the returns to save, savings uh, and investment. And that was quite a considerable package, broadly, uh, broadly fiscally neutral and uh, measured in a number of different ways on equity, uh, which showed that it had really no, no particular impact on the distribution of income. Uh, in the light of recent discussion about tax issues, uh, I'd point out that a number of measures related to uh, investment in property will collect in this financial year somewhere between eight and nine hundred million dollars, uh, effectively uh, increasing the tax rate on that form of investment. So, Budget 2011, uh, Mr. Speaker, focused on getting the government's books back in order, and doing that. Uh, at a time uh, that we had to face the very significant challenge of helping to fund the rebuild of Christchurch and alongside that uh, to continue to work towards higher national savings. And if I can just deal with that issue first. Uh, the most important driver of savings actually isn't government policy, although it can influence it. It's the attitudes of uh, wage and salary earners, business owners, uh, towards saving, and there's no doubt that the global financial crisis sent an unambiguous signal to New Zealanders that more debt is not a good thing, it makes your country and your household and your business vulnerable, uh, and more savings would be a good thing. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons that growth in this economy over the last year or so has been lower has been because people have taken that message to heart more than we might have expected and are saving more. Just an indication of that change in 2011, New Zealanders spent about $1.11 for every dollar that they earned. Uh, this year it uh, may well reach uh, 99 cents, that New Zealand households uh, spend 99 cents for every dollar that they earn and therefore have a positive savings rate for the first time uh, in about 20 years. Mr Speaker, this budget also includes the, uh, essentially the pre-funding of the Christchurch rebuild. It was the government's view uh, that it was vital, there was no question over the government's willingness or ability to make its contribution to the Christchurch rebuild. Uh, 
as those who have worked, been close to the process will know, there has been question marks over the willingness and ability of other uh, payers to fund that rebuild. Uh, in one case, the AMI Insurance Company. So uh, this budget uh, allowed for the fact, uh, demonstrates that the government has effectively borrowed its share around uh, $5.5 billion um, out of a total cost, or a, sorry, a total cost of $8.9 billion, uh, but about $5.5 billion that needed to be borrowed in addition to EQC uh, funding. Uh, and that has been ring-fenced as the um, recovery fund, and we will account for that money as we go, but there's no doubt of the government's uh, commitment to it. And, of course, this budget also shows the continued fiscal consolidation uh, the government has gone through in a considered and consistent fashion with a strong focus on maintaining public services but reducing the costs of providing those public services. And I must compliment the public service on the way it has adapted to a dramatically changed world, not just a change of government, uh, but a, a change in, uh, in, in revenue expectations. And, it, uh, and the leadership of the public service is getting to grips with that and uh, some of them have done a very good job of taking a longer-term view of how to invest in their people and their technology and in new models uh, for service so that they continue to do what they most want to do, which is, in a professional and competent manner, uh, provide uh, excellent public services to New Zealanders. And I think over coming years we are going to be increasingly seen as a country where we're doing a good job of that, where others are struggling with the burdens of debt slashing services uh, and uh, experimenting on a grand scale with how a developed country uh, can support the common good uh, with, a lot, a lot, with a lot less resource. We will learn from those experiments, uh, but uh, the government is not following a radical path in this respect. It's working with the public service uh, to make improvements over time. So, Mr Speaker, I... Uh, commend the uh, Budget 2011 to the House. It's been the appropriate budget for the times uh, and has uh, continued a process of balancing considered judgments uh, from the John Key-led National Government that are enabling New Zealand to build on the strengths that it has, uh, to build on the resilience many New Zealanders have shown uh, through these difficult uh, recessionary times and the now unpredictable uh, environment for economic growth, uh, and we have in that respect come through uh, in pretty good shape, and we expect that we will be able to lift incomes and provide more jobs. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Yeah, Mr Speaker. Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I deal first of all with the impress supply second for 2011-12 bill and say that uh, really there appears to be nothing 